So welcome and thanks for joining us. Uh, today, Vic and I have got the awesome and man of the moment, Zach George, with us. So Zach, you've gone from overweight kid to UK's fittest man. So it's been quite a journey. Um, you've transformed your life through health and fitness. You've become a business over several times over. Um, you've overcome an injury and you have done previously and you're reinventing yourself each, put my teeth back in, even better each time. And um, now you're the author of Start Where Others Stop, a part memoir, part self-help book. So thanks for joining us today. Thank um, you, that's a very good intro. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so first question, Start Where Others Stop philosophy. What is it and how did it manifest itself in your life and career? Yeah, so Start Where Others Stop is all about, um, as, as a kid who had been overweight, it could have been very easy for me to kind of just admit the, the fact that I was going to be an overweight kid and that I was going to be the rest of my life. And um, I find that so many people kind of put barriers in place that they might say, uh, I'm too overweight, I'm too unfit, uh, I don't have enough time to start a fitness journey or, or any sort of journey in their career. And I kind of want to break those barriers down and, and let people know that you can start a journey, fitness journey, a career journey at any stage of your life, doesn't matter how old you are, um, or like I said, how out, out of shape you are, as long as you're willing to put a plan in place, be really resilient and determined and motivated throughout that journey, you can achieve any goal that you want to achieve. So yeah, the book's about a lot about my back, uh, back journey and how I was extremely overweight, pretty much the opposite to how I am now. And also I'm hoping that a lot of people can take away from that book and they might have been putting a, a goal off for, for so many years because they thought that they've passed it or they're never going to be able to achieve it. And I really hope that people can read that book and be like, right, that thing I've wanted to achieve for so long that I've just been putting off, I'm going to start that journey tomorrow. I'm going to put a plan in place and hopefully achieve that goal. So that's my main aim from, from the book and trying to inspire and find that inner confidence and motivation that people might be lacking. Awesome. Brilliant. So inspiring. Um, so question number two. So for anyone that's starting their health and fitness journey um, at the moment, that's a complete beginner. What would your top tips be uh, for those people starting out? So I'd always say, always give this advice is that you've got to run your own race and not get fixated about what everyone else is doing or what journey everyone else is on. So um, any sort of fitness journey, if you have 10 people in the room, they're all going to achieve, even if they have the same goal, they're going to achieve it at different stages and different times because everyone's so, so different. Um, so you've just got to make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. You're doing it for yourself and your internal goals that you want to achieve. But then you've also got to know and understand that you can't compare yourself to anyone else because your journey is going to be different to everyone else's. So you've just got to make sure you run your own race, um, take your time, enjoy the process and be realistic with the goals that you set. Because there's nothing worse than setting a goal that you want to achieve within three weeks and it's just not achievable. And then a few weeks go by, you get demotivated because you've not achieved it and then you kind of quit. So you've got to make sure you're, uh, you're realistic with your time frame of your goals. Um, and I always recommend people to buddy up. So find a friend. Like If you're trying to get into the gym, gym can be a very um, off-putting place if you're not used to the gym environment and it's the first time you're, yeah. you're going to the gym. So if you grab a friend, not only does it keep you accountable, but it just makes it more enjoyable and less daunting because you're going with a friend. Um, so yeah, definitely I'd uh, try and rope your, your best friend into starting that journey with you. And then also um, don't judge yourself on anyone else. Just make sure you're running your own race. Absolutely. Awesome. And like building on that piece around goal setting, you talk about goal setting a lot in your book. So why is it important to set goals and what's the most effective and sustainable way to do it? Yeah, I definitely. I've always recommended setting goals and it's always worked for me because it's kept me on track. I think if you don't have... Uh, a certain point that you want to get to or a certain goal you want to achieve you can kind of get lost in the journey of of what you're trying to achieve and it can be very easy to sway off off track and and you get lost in what you're actually trying to achieve so I think setting a very clear goal and having something that you're very much working towards can make a big change in anyone's sort of career compared to just kind of just working through and and not really knowing what you're achieving it doesn't really tend to last um and I've set goals that I thought I'd achieve within a couple of years, but it's taken kind of double the amount of time. So it doesn't mean that you have goals, you've got to achieve them in six months. They could be a long time goal that you're working towards for three or four years. Um, and I always give the people the strategy that you need your, your main top end goal that you want to work towards. But the best way I've found in making sure I stay on track is having lots of little mini goals. 
Um, so, for example, when I first got into CrossFit, I wanted to, my main goal was always to compete at the CrossFit Games. And it took seven years to finally qualify for the Games. That was a long period of having to work extremely hard. And I don't think I would have achieved it unless I had all the little goals along the way that I was ticking off. And I was getting um, great reward from ticking those little goals off that kept me on track. So it might have been a qualifier for a small comp and then it might have been win a small comp and then it might have been aiming for regionals. So you still have that major goal in mind that you want to achieve and that's your top goal. But then it's really important to set lots of little goals that you can tick off along the journey to to keep you on track, keep you motivated and keep you interested, really. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, that's awesome. It's so important. And I think a lot of people get sidetracked by, or should I say, get put off by the bigger picture and don't yeah. really know how to set those goals along the way and, you know, achievable things that so keeps yeah, you exactly. on the right track. Yeah, and I think them little goals make the bigger goal more realistic because if you set a big goal, so when I first got into CrossFit, obviously competing at the Games is a massive thing that takes a lot of time to be able to achieve and that could have been a very big and daunting goal but when you break it down and you settle the little goals they're more achievable so it, um, I think it enables you to, to aim higher as well setting those little goals in between 100 percent, 100 percent, absolutely and carrying on that um the theme of goal setting I know you talk a lot about setbacks um in your book so we know achieving goals isn't always linear um, so we know both myself and Holly. Uh, so how do you deal um, and overcome setbacks that come your way? Yeah, I think um, setbacks is a part of any sort of journey and you, you've got to be realistic and you're always going to have them at some point. Um, so as an athlete, your, your major setback is injuries. Um, I've had quite a few injuries in the past, but always worked around them. And I've been lucky enough never to have an injury during a major part of the season, which had to put me out. But yeah, this year... Um, Obviously, I aimed to, to, to compete at the Games again and got a hip injury during the second stage of the CrossFit season, which uh, put me out of the season totally. So um, another setback I had was last year, obviously, I qualified for the Games, but then COVID hit. So that that enabled me to, to compete at the Games. And I think um, setbacks, every time I have a setback, I always try and find a positive within that situation. Um and I know last year when I didn't compete at the Games, it freed up so many months of the year where I was able to focus on different aspects of my career. So I was able to write the book um, and really work with other brands and try and create as much good content for them. So every time I have a setback, I always want to make sure kind of four or five months after I've kind of sat down and reevaluated what I've achieved in that period that I wouldn't have achieved if I hadn't had that setback. So if I was still competing at the Games, I would have been so focused and training and competing at the Games, I probably wouldn't have written the book and probably wouldn't have achieved a lot of that, what we achieved in the last year if I was still competing at the Games. So I can look back and say, like, right, I'm actually quite, I'm not glad, but I turned that negative into a positive and we achieved so much more because of that setback. Um, and that's the same for, for this year. Now I'm not competing at the Games. It's, allowed, it's freed up probably five months of the year that we wouldn't have had because I would have been so dedicated, dedicated towards training. And at the end of this year, I want to be in the same position where I can honestly sit down and be like, right, I was gutted that I got that injury, but I've turned it in such a big positive way. And we've achieved so much in this last year, which you wouldn't have done if I was still competing at the game. So, yeah, it doesn't um, doesn't make you happy that you had that setback because I'd be loved to be competing at the games. But it's a nice, nice thing at the end of the year where you've turned that setback into a positive and you've been able to achieve a lot since having that setback. So, yeah, I think once you have any setback in, in any stage of your life, you've always got to allow yourself a bit of a sulking stage because obviously it, it's a negative experience and you don't want to go for a setback. But once you've got through that, you've kind of got a plan in place. At the end of that time, it's really nice feeling to, to know that you've turned it around and turned it into a positive situation. Absolutely. It is a, it's a mind over matter sort of principle, isn't it? You know, you've got to get your head right to, to focus on actually what's next. What do you need to do to keep going to where you want to go? Um, yeah, so on that note, what's the best advice you've ever had? Ooh, best advice I've ever had. Um, I think one of the best advices uh, my dad gave me, and I just got to think of the quote, is if, if you're the if you're the smartest man in the room, you're in the wrong room. And that can be applied to any situation. If you're the, the fittest guy in the room, then you're in the wrong room. And I think it's always, you've got to surround yourself with people that, are always better than you in in any aspect that you're working towards so 
Um, if you are the fittest in your gym, you're going to get at some point a little bit slack because you don't know what that next level above is. So you've always got to be aware of what everyone who's better than you is doing. And I think that's always helped me because I've always tried to put myself in situations, surround myself with people who are further in their career than me or better athletes than me because that really inspires you and, and keeps you on your toes and keeps you driving towards the next thing. Um, and I think it just enables you to never get complacent in your athlete career or your working career. You've always got to be, for me, always striving towards the next thing or learning off other people and what they're doing or, or that training plan might be working really well for him and, and kind of noting what he's doing and taking bits from that. So, um, yeah, I think that's always something that I've always lived by. I've always made sure that I've got people around me that are doing better than me, which is going to inspire me and, and push me in my career as well. Absolutely. That, yeah, that. that segues really nicely into our next question, actually. So, like, it, again, going back to the book, you talk about the value of role models and support networks. Yeah. Um, so in terms of what value do they bring and, and what purpose do they serve? Yeah, role models um, are really good. And I was like I said, you've always got to have people that you inspire to. I think uh, my main role model has always been my parents and my sister, because sister's seven years older than me. Um, my parents came from a background of, of having nothing, really. Um, Dad moved over from Guyana when he was 12 years old, um, didn't have any money to their name, um, and they built a really successful business together and did really well for themselves. And it was a period of time where um, it would have been hard for my dad growing up in England and obviously not knowing anyone, um, and so they're a really inspiring couple to come from nothing and then to watch them obviously be successful and how they they um, talk to people and just how they carry themselves has always been very inspiring to me. And they've always, always drawn it into me to aim high and, and kind of dream big and, and anything that you put your mind towards, you can achieve. So they're both really good role models that I always say they're my number two kind of role models that I've always inspired to. Um, from a, a sporting environment, I've always looked up to Michael Jordan. And uh, yeah, he's just an amazing character. And his will to win and his work ethic is so inspiring. And um, he was always someone that I looked up to. And I think, I don't know if you've seen um, his Netflix documentary. It's called... Uh, it's, it's brilliant. Oh, Jordan's yeah, what, a goat, isn't he? So. Yeah. What's it called? Um, something that last dance or something? I think it's called last dance or last stand something like that yeah uh, and yeah that just kind of was amazing just to see like I said his work ethic he's the best in the sport and just how how much he wanted to win was just an amazing thing to see um and then one more role model I have was Usain Bolt and obviously a great athlete but I loved how he's so laid back so he could be on the start line getting ready for a 100 meter sprint and he's still so laid back he's dancing he's cheering to the crowd speaking to the judges and yeah I love that aspect because I can relate that to me I'm, I'm a super laid back guy and when I'm in competition I'm super chilled and then as soon as the buzzer goes like you get into game mode so I really love that aspect of Usain Bolt of how he can be so laid back and so chilled before such an amazing kind of period of his life he's about to run the 100 meter race so how he can be so relaxed and chilled and then just switch it on I, I love the aspect of his character I think that goes to show because obviously you've got your infamous floss that you do it yeah. at your pump. So I think that that's, <laughs> yeah. a, that's a good example, really. But yeah. one thing I'd like, I really did enjoy about your book was that, obviously I read a couple of CrossFit books now and so is Vic. And I, I'd say that yours is probably right up there with Catherine's because I'm a big Catherine fan myself. So oh, um, I think it's great because you did, you took a different angle to how some of the other CrossFit books have gone so far. Um, it's not just about, you know, all these amazing workouts and tough workouts that you've mm -hmm. done. I think you incorporated really nicely your family side of things and the humble beginnings that you had and how that like you know you've overcome all the different obstacles that you have through you know injury from rugby career and going into doing your own business and then failure and then how you, you know with inspiration from your network how you managed to overcome that to to keep progressing and, and develop the businesses that you've got today and and get where you are now from a, a sports perspective so yeah it's, it's really really good oh, thank and you. Yeah. lots of actual practical tips that people can take away and work through when they're whilst they're reading the book as well so I thought that was really useful and a lot of people will really get a lot from that so I didn't want to see a book where you kind of just getting work ideas or they're only just learning about my backstory I wanted to them to learn that and learn like the failures that I've been through but then also like you said Vic I want people to take it away 
actual tools they can use in their everyday life. And um, yeah, I've had some great feedback and people are already starting to put things in place and and set goals and, and get strategies for themselves. So that was probably the main thing I wanted people to take away from that book is that even if one person could read that book and it changed their life and they get more dedicated or they they set goals and they achieve a goal from reading it, that's probably my my main aim from from writing the book. Is that kind of what inspired you to write the book then is around helping other people? Yeah, it's kind of all the things that I've learned along the years, where it be setbacks through training, setbacks through business, um, journey from being an overweight kid to becoming the UK's fittest man. I wanted to to use that and, and try and help as many people as possible. And um, yeah, that was the great way to, to do about it and, and let people read the book and, and take away the tools that they can use in everyday life. So yeah, it's definitely one of the main reasons I wanted to read it and try and just motivate and change as many people's lives as possible, really. Yeah, I think it's certainly going to help uh, change a lot of people's lives. Definitely. Yeah. I think it's, like I say, I think it's a really great different spin to what's already out there from a CrossFit book perspective or a fitness book perspective. So, yeah, I think it will yeah, need to get lots of attention and, and to bloom. Vic, okay. sorry, I know I've got the next question. No, don't worry, it's fine. So we're going to move on to like a bit of mo- motivation now. So we all know sustaining motivation is hard. Um, so so many things can impact it you know life work um, can always get in the way so um, how do you stay motivated and keep going when your motivation is perhaps a bit low yeah I think for this the most important thing is the people around you and the community that you surround yourself in so there's days where I go into a gym and I don't want to train it's just just, I don't want to put myself in that pain or I'm just feeling lazy or um, yeah I think it's definitely hard for an athlete to to be 100% motivated every single day, every single week. And I just don't think it happens. Everyone's human. You're going to have those days where you just don't feel good. You don't feel as motivated. But as soon as I walk into that gym, uh, CrossFit BFG and the community's there and all my training partners are there and they're so positive, they're the people who pick me up on the days where I don't feel as motivated. So if I didn't have that great community around me, there's days where I probably would go into the gym, I'd sandbag the sessions, it'd be a rubber session, and then I'd just go home. Whereas the days where I feel exactly the same, I come into the gym and they just get me geared up. They say, look, Zach, come on, you've got your goals you want to hit. We might be three months out from a competition. And they're the ones who kind of pick me up, give me a great session. And then I walk away from the gym feeling great. And I had a really good unexpected training session. So I think that definitely for me, the, the biggest key thing for that is making sure you surround yourself with positive people, people who want to see each other succeed. So they want to see me succeed in my athlete and business career as much as I want to see them them shine in their athlete and their business career. So yeah, it's a great community of people who want to see everyone do well, want to see each other succeed and we're there for each other. So that's my biggest thing, I think, that helps me when I'm not feeling so motivated. Brilliant. Um, that comes out really nicely, I think, in CrossFit gyms as well. And mm-hmm. maybe, yeah. you know, I think from an elite perspective, people might get put off by how intense it can be. But I think once you're in there, you feel that environment and it's it's addictive. And yeah. you kind of, I don't know, personal perspective and fit, obviously you say yours, but I've never quite experienced sort of an environment like that, especially in a gym, more from a mm. sort of team perspective when I, you know, from my football playing days, but not in terms of a gym. So I think that's what makes them really special. Yeah, 100%. And that's what I think probably keeps 85% of our members coming back is the social aspect in the community. So people will come to the gym, they might do an hour workout, but they end up spending two hours in the gym just because they're chatting to their friends. And it is people's social lives. They, they come just obviously to get a good workout, but they're also there to, to see their friends, have a good laugh, and that's their kind of stress relief. Um, just, yeah, it's definitely the biggest advantage a CrossFit gym has over any other sort of commercial gym is, is that community feel and everyone pushing each other. And you can have a workout which has ring muscle-ups in, but then you've got people who are doing ring rows or pull-ups. It can be scalable to, to any option and any fitness level. So, yeah, it's definitely what keeps people hooked, I think, is that community feel. 100%. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and then moving on then, so what's been at the most pivotal uh, moment in your, your journey and your mindset so far? Um, I would say probably the, the biggest thing that I've, I've achieved is by far... Um, qualifying for the CrossFit Games last year and winning the UK's Fittest Man that's probably yeah my biggest achievement that I'm proudest of because it took seven years of working hard every single day to, to get to the physical state where you're able to to win that title so that's definitely my biggest achievement but I think probably the biggest turning point for me 
was uh, when I was younger going to a Anthony Robinson seminar. So what started my weight loss journey was my dad said, um, I'll buy a PlayStation 2 if, if, you lose, if we lose some weight together. So for me, that's all I wanted as a kid was a PlayStation 2. Um, so instead of having four or five McDonald's a week, I'd have maybe two or three. Instead of having a bag of sweets every day, I'd just have kind of two or three bags a week. And after that first two months, we lost some weight pretty easily just because I just haven't stopped having as many calories in the week. And it was really a special moment of going to Toys R Us, buying a PlayStation 2 with my dad. And it was a great experience. I'll never forget. But then the biggest thing probably happened about a year later when we went to Anthony Robinson seminar. And that was all about motivation, mindset, um, career goals, nutrition. And after that weekend, it was the first time where I really wanted to get in shape and lose weight for myself. And I didn't need any other external source or reward to, to make me want to do anything in fitness or change my diet. So, yeah, I think that was the, probably the, one of the biggest points of my life was coming off that weekend and actually wanting to sort my health out, sort my diet out, sort my training regime out and, and really wanting and inspiring for more from life. And experiencing that at such a young age, I was probably about 15 then. Um, that was definitely like a, a pivotal point in my life and really changed my mindset. So going back to the book, because that's what we're here to talk about. If you could give one key takeaway from your book, what would it be? One key takeaway? Uh, I would probably say it was it's teaching people how to to put a plan in place. And it might sound really basic, but even just if you have... Um, if you set a goal, that's not always good enough to, to achieve that goal. You can't just write, I want to achieve this, and then just, just carry on with life and not really do anything. I think that's where a lot of people go wrong with their goal setting. They'll set a goal and they just expect it to achieve it, but they don't put a plan in place each month, each year to, to work towards that goal. So I think the biggest thing that I want people to take away is, is that plan is that planning process which will lead you to achieving that goal um so yeah not just being able to write a goal down and say, think that's good enough you've got to write the goal down and then i want people to learn and to take away from the book of how to put a plan in place keep ticking off those little goals that are going to help achieve the big goal um so yeah i'd say it's kind of that planning process in achieving that goal awesome absolutely and i know you mentioned it, it might sound basic but the basics were you know, people yeah. are always looking for the, you know, the fancy um, way to do things, but the basics, they do really work. Yeah, exactly. Like That could be like anything and that could be uh, like your nutrition or your training goal. I think people always try and overcomplicate everything and it can be as simple as just eating healthy 80% of the week, 20% mm -hmm. you can enjoy yourself and you're probably going to be in a good shape. So I think it's just kind of, yeah, everyone's always looking for that overcomplicated fix where mm -hmm. if you just down to the basics and get a basic plan in place just stick with it be consistent with it then you, you're going to be more likely to achieve your goal rather than trying to do something really complicated after a month and then just just quitting absolutely and it's it's not about quick fixes either yeah. it's about yeah. small things that are sustainable every day for a longer yeah. period of time that yeah. don't impact your life on too drastic a scale that yeah. then you say it's it's quick fast failure isn't it yeah so, i think well, especially this day and age everyone wants everything so quick and you've just got to kind of drill into people that it takes time to achieve goals. And you've just got to be willing to be patient and consistent. And then 90% of the time, you're going to be successful with achieving that goal. So, yeah, just you've just got to really drill into people that it's not going to be a quick fix and it's not going to, it's not going to work in, in one or two weeks. Or if you want to get a great shape for summer, you're not going to do it in two weeks. Or if you do go on a fad diet three weeks after you're going to, you're going to be in a worse off position than you were before just because it's been such a drastic change. So yeah, drilling that it's, it's a long steady process that you've got to be willing to enjoy. And you've got to enjoy that process. That's one of the most important things. If you're not enjoying that process towards that goal, you, you're most likely not going to keep it up. So um, yeah, a mixture of several different things. Definitely. Vic, these are all key messages for you hitting your spot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so um. Look, we know that you've had so many interviews by now and it must be quite routine, but are you willing to tell us anything that you've not told anyone before? It could be life, it could be fitness, it could be career. Uh, I once nearly drowned. Okay. Wow, Look, expand on that a little bit. <laughs> uh, so, I, mean, I don't think I've ever told anyone this on a podcast. Um, so it was years ago, probably 
probably six, seven years ago. So I never really developed any sort of swimming skills. I think it comes from me being really self-conscious as a kid about having my top offs. I never wanted to do any swimming lessons. So I never really learned how to swim properly. And um, it, we, I was on holiday and it was the first time where I'd just been kind of getting about a year of swimming under my belt. But it has always been in the swimming pool. Um, so this is the first time I was swimming in the sea. And it felt great. I was swimming out to this red boy out in the sea, got there and then just panicked for some reason. And it's the first time I've ever been in that sort of panic situation. And uh, I literally couldn't swim back. So I had to call a lifeguard, a really big beach. Lifeguard comes oh. running out after a back. So, yeah, that was a, that was a pretty embarrassing moment. No, oh, that's so extreme. Yeah. I, and then, <laughs> I did a wolf run once and I, I was like, oh, I'll go through the water, thinking it was like the autumn one. It'll be all right. Got in there, got to like halfway point and I had to then get dragged across because it was so cold. It just took all my energy away <laughs> <laughs> to the side. So, yeah, yeah, not cool, not cool. Water, water could be a very dangerous thing if, you, if you're not very comfortable in that situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm super confident swimming, but then something just triggered in my head and just started panicking. And it's, uh, yeah, it's crazy how, like, I consider myself as quite a strong-minded person. And you just, you, I was hanging on to the boy thinking, like, calm myself down, trying to control my breathing. And you just can't do it. And it's just, uh, yeah, really weird, bizarre situation. It's something that I had to really work on after that because it was that little, like, mental trigger in my head. Um, so we had to kind of overcome that in, in the, developing my swimming strength. But, um, yeah, pretty pretty embarrassing Do you feel like that experience has helped you kind of develop your mindset when it comes to fitness as well you know overcoming uh, your own barriers yeah because it was the first time where I just felt totally out I just wasn't in control mm. and um now like when I learned to swim really well after that and I did lots of swimming competitions there was a few points where I'd be swimming and I could feel myself getting a little bit panicky and it's enabled me to just kind of really control that and, and bring it down and I know I've been in that situation before. I know how to control it. Um, so, yeah, definitely something that I, I've learned from and kind of overcome and, and it wouldn't happen again. But, yeah, that first time was pretty, pretty scary situation. I think it's because water is unpredictable, isn't it? Especially like open water. It's yeah. so unknown and unpredictable. So Yeah, and it, you, you could be super tired in the gym and then you just you just have a rest. But in the water, there's no real rest unless you're in a pool. You can just chill on the side of the pool. But yeah, when you're in open water, you're pretty vulnerable. Yeah, that's very true. Absolutely. Right. I don't know if this is possible. I've got a challenge for you before we go. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, fingers crossed. Can you show us your infamous floss? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a car park, so everyone's going to see me do this. But I'm willing <laughs> for the challenge. Yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> Excellent. I don't know how to set my phone up. Uh, is there anything you can prop it on? Here we go. Right, this is gonna be, there's a car right next to me. Oh, they're gonna, they're gonna love it. They're gonna love it. They're getting a first hand view. <laughs> hey! Yes! <laughs> smooth move, smooth. Oh, Very good. Thanks, Zach. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, um, I'm just gonna close us off now, but thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Anytime. It was great to talk to you. And yeah. we have the books are roaring success. Um, so fingers crossed for loads more sales. Keep seeing you out there in the media. And thank uh, you very much. Good luck with overcoming the injury and getting back on the on the competition floor soon. Yeah, Absolutely. we've got about yeah. six months now to the next competition. So we've got plenty of time to, to get the body right and get it fixed. So awesome, yeah, bro. fingers crossed. We look forward to seeing you on the floor soon. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for your Cheers, time. Bye. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye bye.